Hey everyone, welcome back to Generative AI. It's great to have you here today. We're talking about Markov Chain Monte Carlo Methods, or MCMC. This phrase might sound complex, but by the end of this video, you'll understand what MCMC is and why it's crucial in modern computational statistics and machine learning. Suppose you have a complicated probability distribution that represents all possible outcomes of a problem. This distribution might live in a high dimensional space with peaks and valleys, we often need to sample from it to estimate integrals, compute expectations, or infer model parameters. Direct calculation is impossible for complex distributions, so we use sampling methods. MCMC is a powerful framework for generating samples that approximate any distribution, no matter how intricate. The name Markov Chain Monte Carlo combines two ideas. A Markov chain is a sequence of random states where each state depends only on the previous one. Monte Carlo refers to using randomness to perform numerical computations. By combining them, MCMC algorithms build a sequence of samples that, over time, reflect the shape of the target distribution. Each new sample depends only on the current sample, and randomness drives exploration. Visualize a rugged landscape representing probability density. You want to explore it without evaluating every point. You start at a random position. Then you propose a small random move, if that move goes to a higher density region, you accept it. If it goes to a lower density region, you might still accept it with some probability. By repeating these steps thousands or millions of times, you spend more time in high density regions. The collection of visited points approximates the true distribution. One of the earliest MCMC methods is the Metropolis algorithm. You begin at an initial state. To propose a new state, you add a random perturbation drawn from a symmetric distribution, such as a Gaussian centered at the current state. Compute the target probability at the proposed state divided by that of the current state. If this ratio is greater than one, accept the new state. If it's less than one, accept it with probability equal to the ratio. If you reject it, stay at your current state and repeat. Over many iterations, the chain's distribution approaches the true target. Later, the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm generalized this idea by allowing asymmetric proposals. You can propose new states from any proposal distribution as long as you adjust the acceptance ratio to account for the probability of proposing that move versus its reverse. This flexibility lets you design proposals that suit your problem. For instance, if your target distribution has known structure, you might choose proposals that jump along directions of strong correlation. Adjusting the acceptance ratio accordingly preserves the correct stationary distribution. Today, Google is heavily invested in making MCMC more efficient and scalable. Modern applications in natural language processing, computer vision, and reinforcement learning often involve models with millions of parameters. Running a plain Metropolis-Hastings chain on such models would take forever. Google's frameworks automate tuning of parameters like step sizes and adapt proposal distributions based on the shape of the posterior. Scalability matters. Imagine you run MCMC on your laptop for a 10 parameter model. A few thousand iterations might finish in minutes. Now consider a Bayesian deep neural network with millions of weights, inferring the posterior over every weight using naive MCMC on a single machine would be impractical. Google's infrastructure splits the problem across multiple nodes, each handling subsets of parameters. Adaptive MCMC is another major advancement. Classical MCMC requires setting tuning parameters before running. If chosen poorly, chains mix slowly or reject most proposals. Adaptive MCMC algorithms learn from sampling history, adjusting proposal covariances to match the target's shape. Early steps explore broader regions, Later steps use refined proposals to sample efficiently. Let's explore these ideas in more detail. Assessing convergence is critical. Google's ecosystem provides diagnostic tools that let you monitor chains in real time. You can run multiple chains from different initial states, visualize trace plots for each parameter, and compute statistics like the gelman rubin r hat metric. When r hat is close to one, it indicates chains have mixed well across initializations. You also calculate effective sample size, which accounts for correlation between successive samples. That tells you how many independent samples you effectively have, guiding decisions about whether more iterations are needed. Consider a concrete example. Suppose you model user preferences on a streaming platform, 
You build a hierarchical Bayesian model that captures individual tastes, demographic factors, and time of day effects. If you run traditional maximum likelihood, you get point estimates for preferences, but using Bayesian inference via MCMC, you obtain a full posterior distribution over each user's preferences. That distribution quantifies uncertainty. When you generate recommendations, you factor in uncertainty by suggesting a video that ranks highest on average, but also offering alternatives if the posterior is wide. Another application is in medical research. Imagine a clinical trial comparing different doses of a novel drug. You build a Bayesian survival model, including covariates like age, gender, and underlying health conditions. Using MCMC, you sample from the posterior distribution of model parameters. With those samples, you compute credible intervals for survival probabilities, adjust for covariate effects, and identify subgroups that benefit most. That level of inference goes far beyond simple regression techniques and provides clinicians with richer insights. Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, or HMC, is one of the most popular modern MCMC variants. Instead of random walk proposals, HMC uses concepts from physics. You treat the negative log likelihood as a potential energy function. Then you introduce auxiliary momentum variables and simulate Hamiltonian dynamics. Because these dynamics conserve energy, your proposals follow trajectories that traverse high density regions efficiently. HMC proposals can move long distances with high acceptance rates, improving mixing in high dimensional spaces. Implementing HMC requires tuning additional parameters like step size and number of leapfrog steps. If chosen poorly, the sampler might diverge. Google's TensorFlow probability library includes the no U-turn sampler or NUTS, which addresses this issue. NUTS adapts the number of leapfrog steps automatically by detecting when trajectories start to double back. It also tunes step sizes to target a desired acceptance probability. These automatic adjustments simplify using HMC for newcomers, reducing tedious manual tuning. Google researchers have also explored combining MCMC with variational inference. Variational methods approximate a complex posterior with a simpler parametric distribution fitted via optimization. They're fast but can introduce bias. MCMC is asymptotically exact but slower. A hybrid approach might first run variational inference to find a rough approximation, then initialize an MCMC sampler within that region to refine estimates. This approach can dramatically reduce burn-in time by starting sampling near high probability areas. If you're getting started with MCMC, it helps to follow a simple coding tutorial. In TensorFlow Probability or Pyro, you can define a Bayesian linear regression model in just a few lines. Define priors on slope and intercept, write down the likelihood for observed data and call an MCMC sampler function. You'll get samples for the parameters, which you can summarize using posterior means and credible intervals. Once comfortable, you can move to logistic regression, hierarchical models, or Bayesian neural networks. Model validation is essential. Convergence diagnostics tell you if your chain has mixed well, but they don't guarantee your model fits the data. Posterior predictive checks help. Simulate new data from your model using posterior samples, then compare those simulated data sets to real observations. If simulated data consistently differ, reconsider your model assumptions or priors. Google's libraries provide tools for posterior predictive sampling and visualization, making it easier to diagnose model misspecification. When running MCMC, reproducibility matters. Document your code, record random seeds, and note environment details such as library versions and hardware. Google Cloud hosted notebooks allow you to capture a snapshot of the entire environment, including package versions. By sharing a containerized deployment or a Docker image, you ensure that colleagues can reproduce your results exactly. Even minor differences in numeric libraries can lead to divergent chains, so tracking environments is crucial. Let's briefly review how MCMC evolved. Early methods like random walk metropolis were simple but slow. As computing power grew, researchers developed HMC and other advanced samplers, enabling efficient exploration of high dimensional spaces. Slice sampling, Gibbs sampling, and reversible jump MCMC emerged to handle discrete and trans-dimensional problems. Today, MCMC integrates with deep learning frameworks 
benefiting from GPU acceleration and distributed architectures, tackling modern challenges in machine learning and statistics. Choosing when to use MCMC is a practical consideration. If you have a small data set and model complexity is moderate, standard MCMC works well on a single machine. For massive data sets, you might use stochastic gradient MCMC methods that approximate gradients using mini batches. Those methods trade exactness for scalability, but often yield useful approximations. Alternatively, variational methods provide fast but biased results. A sensible strategy is to start with variational inference, then refine with MCMC on a smaller subset of data or on key parameters. Interpreting MCMC output involves summarizing posterior samples. You often compute marginal means, medians, and 95% credible intervals for each parameter. Joint distributions reveal correlations, so pair plots or correlation matrices help visualize dependencies. Effective sample size estimates tell you how many independent samples you effectively have, guiding whether more iterations are needed. Google's RVZ integration generates publication quality plots automatically, simplifying result interpretation and reporting. Deciding when to stop a chain involves monitoring diagnostics, run multiple chains from different initial points, discard a burn-in period, and compute R-hat. When R-hat is close to one and effective sample sizes are adequate, you can stop sampling. If diagnostics indicate poor mixing or low effective sample sizes, extend the chain or revise tuning parameters. There's no one-size-fits-all rule, but combining multiple diagnostics gives confidence about convergence. In reinforcement learning, Bayesian methods can improve exploration. An agent might maintain a posterior distribution over environment dynamics. MCMC can sample from that posterior, enabling the agent to choose actions that reduce uncertainty. Google DeepMind has published work on Bayesian reinforcement learning demonstrating that uncertainty-aware exploration can reduce sample complexity in challenging tasks. While computationally demanding, these Bayesian approaches offer theoretical guarantees and more efficient learning when uncertainty is significant. Probabilistic programming languages simplify MCMC usage. In Pyro or Edward, you express models in Python, and the framework automatically derives posteriors and runs inference. TensorFlow. Probability follows the same pattern. You define distributions, combine them into a model, and call MCMC functions with minimal boilerplate. These abstractions let data scientists focus on model design while the framework handles algorithmic details, proposal tuning, and parallelization. It's helpful to understand the mathematical foundation. MCMC relies on properties like detailed balance and ergodicity. Detailed balance ensures that, in equilibrium, Transitions between any two states balance out, leading to a stationary distribution equal to the target. Ergodicity guarantees that the chain eventually explores the entire support of the distribution. When these conditions hold, the chain converges to a unique stationary distribution, independent of its starting point. Looking ahead, exciting research combines MCMC with deep generative models. Normalizing flows transform simple base distributions into complex targets via invertible transformations. If we use a learned flow as a proposal distribution within MCMC, we can achieve high acceptance rates and efficient exploration of complex posteriors. Early results suggest that flow-based MCMC can dramatically reduce the number of required iterations, making high-dimensional Bayesian inference faster and more reliable. Computational cost remains a concern. Evaluating likelihoods on large datasets, each iteration can be expensive. Researchers developed stochastic gradient MCMC methods using mini batches to estimate gradients and reduce cost. Google's frameworks let you switch between full data MCMC and mini batch based methods and leverage distributed computing to parallelize evaluations. In summary, MCMC methods allow us to sample from complex probability distributions enabling robust Bayesian inference in high-dimensional settings. From Metropolis Hastings and Gibbs sampling to Hamiltonian dynamics and adaptive techniques, MCMC algorithms continue evolving. Google's innovations in scalable MCMC, automated tuning, and integration with deep learning make these methods accessible to researchers and engineers. By using convergence diagnostics, posterior predictive checks, and careful model validation, 
we can build trustworthy probabilistic models that inform decisions in domains ranging from healthcare to recommendation systems. Thanks for watching Generative AI. I hope this overview of MCMC and Google's contributions has given you new perspective on Bayesian inference. If you found this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave questions or share your experiences with MCMC in the comments. I'd love to hear about your challenges, successes, or topics you want me to cover next. Until next time, happy sampling and stay curious.